हेलो व्यूअर्स माई सेल्फ इज़ डॉक्टर नीता एंड यू आर वॉचिंग माई चैनल लर्न लिटरेचर विद डॉक्टर नीता सो लेट एस बिगिन टूडेज टॉपिक हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स टूडे वी वुड लर्न अबाउट वेरियस काइंड ऑफ पोइट्री एज डिपिक्टेड इन सर फिलिप सिडनीज एंड एपोलॉजी फॉर पोइट्री इट इज द सेकेंड वीडियो इन दिस सीरीज इन द फर्स्ट वन यू वुड गेट एन ओवर व्यू ऑफ एन एपोलॉजी फॉर पोइट्री एंड इन दैट वीडियो द काइंड ऑफ पोइट्री हैव नॉट बीन एक्सप्लेन इन डिटेल सो हियर इट इज द अनदर वीडियो इन विच वेरियस काइंड ऑफ पोइट्री have been described so first is the definition of poetry according to sydney uh, in this reference sydney seems to be a classicist as he goes with the definition of poetry as it has been given by aristotle so this is the definition poesy therefore is an art of imitation for so aristotle termed it in his word my message that is to say a representing counterfeiting or figuring forth to speak metaphorically a speaking picture it is called poetry is called a speaking picture with this and to teach and delight here you should keep in mind that um, sydney is using the word poetry or poesy in a true classicist sense and in that respect it also includes drama according to sydney all knowledge aims at teaching of virtues he admits that philosophy and history also teach virtue but they are not superior to poetry in fulfilling this objective of teaching virtues so when he compares uh, the function of poetry he finds that philosophy and history are also teaching virtues but as far as their limit to teach virtue is concerned poetry is better in comparison to philosophy and history he justifies it by giving examples he says that philosopher sets down certain concepts and rules through arguments that in philosophy there are arguments based on certain ideas or rules and his knowledge mainly stands on abstract and general and the knowledge given by philosopher is an is of an abstract kind and uh, that is why it is not uh, understood by the persons with limited knowledge easily uh, in fact philosophy is a uh, useful for the learned persons similarly historian reveal the fact through the examples of past uh, they tell uh, what was but they cannot tell what should be at that time but poet deals with the universal he combines both the ideas or the percept with suitable example it means history and philosophy join together in poetry as far as their capacity to make the virtue accessible for each and every one and apart from that poetry also turns knowledge into performance as i already told you that this here the poetry is defined um, uh, and poetry includes drama so poetry is just adding the part of performance that is why it is quite effective in teaching virtue now the kinds of poetry there are three kinds of poetry according to sydney Uh, number one religious poetry philosophical poetry and the imaginative poetry which he describes as the right kind imaginative poetry has further been divided into epic pastoral tragic comic satiric elegiac and lyric amongst them epic or heroic is considered to be the most significant and the most accomplished one as it tells about the higher truths of life and helps to acquire virtues now what is the basis of the classification of uh, poetry according to sydney so sydney says uh, that uh, he has classified the poetry into different kinds based on its purpose and content it means uh, the purpose of the different kind of poetry is different and that is why different kind of poetry has the different content each kind of poetry and its subdivision follow different aims and is designed to please the different kind of uh, audience there are three main kinds of poetry as i already told you religious philosophical and imaginative the imaginative kind is most 
properly poetic one about which Sydney explains the most. So Sydney has given a long detail to make us understand the imaginative kind of poetry. It has been subdivided into several genres. His classification hints at the fact that he believes in moral and instructive power of poetry. He is not satisfied merely by the fact that the poetry should be for entertainment only. Rather, he is of the opinion that besides entertainment, it should also provide some moral or moral education and instruction. Now, uh, the details of the three kinds of poetry, the religious one, this type of poetry imitates God's excellencies and includes the Old Testament, New Testament, Psalms of David like Solomon's song, David's psalm and hymns and all the book of Job. So it means uh, the poetry which is uh, uh, imitating the excellencies of God or which is in praise of God or which is depicting God uh, like the um, Old and New Testament of Bible, the various Psalms or various songs which are there in the books of him and the book of Job. Uh, uh, also depict or come under the category of religious poetry. Second one is the didactic poetry. The purpose of this poetry is merely to give some philosophical lessons. So this type of poetry is written in a literary form to make philosophical knowledge easier to learn. The purpose of this poetry is to teach and the convey moral or philosophical lesson. So first one is in the appreciation of God. Second one is the didactic one giving knowledge only. And the third one imaginative is quite significant because it is written by the right poets and they are not only teaching the thing but they are teaching the things with delight. So imaginative poetry is teaching and also providing delight and it can further be divided into pastoral, heroic, lyric, comic, etc. Now, the first one, pastoral and iambic. Pastoral, as all of you know, uh, pastoral poetry is related to the life of shepherds and shepherdess. It is the humblest kind of poetry written in lowest style. Uh, so, there is not a grand style in it. But as far as the content is concerned, uh, the content includes simple country scenes based on the pretty tales of wolves and sheep. It means it is related to life of shepherds. But it is quite significant because it has the capacity to reflect on human nature and various social issues with the help of allegory and symbolism. Though it is of having the low style, yet it is powerful enough to express the basic human nature. Next one is iambic, a form of poetry primarily associated with satire and criticism and it was traditionally used by ancient Greeks for sharp satirical attack. Keep in mind sharp satirical attack on human vices and societal flaws. So whatever human weaknesses were there or the weaknesses in the society were there, in ancient Greek time, uh, iambic poetry was used to fling satire on these weaknesses. Just in the next slide, we would also come to another kind of poetry uh, that is satiric. But uh, as far as uh, iambic and satiric are concerned, the purpose of both are same. But there is a difference. I would let you know later on. Sydney acknowledges its power to expose moral corruption and folly, making it an effective tool for social commentary. Now the satiric one. So keep in mind the iambic also. Uh, satiric poetry criticizes human vices and societal flaws and highlights absurdity and corruption of human action through humor, wit and irony. So the iambic one was more pungent or uh, uh, they were quite biting kind of uh, satires were there, uh, especially used by Greeks. Uh, while the satiric poetry serves the corrective function by encouraging reader to reflect on their own behavior and society at large. So the function of uh, satiric poetry is the corrective one. It means uh, uh, the purpose of satire is to make correction in the 
weaknesses which the characters or the society has so when the reader uh, reads this satiric poetry they reflect on their own behavior and society at large sydney also warns uh, that uh, excessive or malicious uh, satire should not be used so now the basic difference between satiric uh, and iambic uh, one is that uh, that uh, that was used by greeks and uh, that was uh, more formal uh, but uh, in a generalized sense uh, the satiric poetry was used even after that uh, it doesn't mean in what meter it has been used whether it was iambic or not uh, but uh, as far as the purpose is concerned both were having the same purposes now the elegiac poetry as uh, all of you know that elegies were written uh, uh, with uh, a specific pur purpose uh, to commemorate the death or loss of uh, some near or dear one so elegy arouses sympathy for the suffering and miserable Sydney appreciate elegiac poetry for its ability to connect with the deep human emotions. Sydney Sydney appreciates elegy because it has the ability to connect with the deep human emotions. So when the reader is reading an elegy, he would be able to connect with the deep human emotions, uh, and that offer comfort and encourage thought about life's unavoidable realities like death and loss uh, when they read about the death and loss uh, they come to realize the fact uh, these are the unavoidable realities uh, and they uh, get themselves ready for such situations such poems can teach moral lessons fostering empathy empathy for the for the one who is having or who is facing the uh, death of someone or empathy for one who is dead and introspection it they also put the reader in the mood of introspection uh, so that they may also think about their own life now the comic and tragic one one thing is uh, quite uh, good in case of uh, Sydney that he also accepts comedy and considers it good because it uses humor and wit to entertain often by depicting the follies and absurdities of human behavior even in comedy follies and absurdities are of human behavior are explained but it does not mean that it teaches evil evil is shown on the stage but the purpose of showing the evil is not to teach evil or rather through it one gets an experience of vice and learns the effects of it rather the function of comedy is also to teach something because when one sees uh, the depiction of evil on the stage he gets an experience of the vice and he learns the effects of it sidney compares it to a mirror so sydney uh, compares uh, comedy to a mirror in which we can see the reflection of the reality not only of the characters but also the reality of the society this means uh, that it is a realistic genre uh, instead of an idealized one like tragedy and epic now the tragic tragic poetry holds uh, has been put in the high regard because it has the capability to evoke deep emotions like pity and fear in this case he is also with aristotle he has described that tragedy is an imitation of an action and it also arouses the feelings of pity and fear uh, that ultimately leads to catharsis so he believes in that uh, theory of tragedy sydney believes that tragedy serves a moral purpose and he says that tragedy also serves a moral purpose because in it we see the fall of the great characters it means we see the fall of hero the hero falls because of the hamashia uh, either it is the tragic flaw uh, or the some weakness in his character or it is because of his fate if you have learned hamlet you would um, realize that there is a flaw uh, there is a weakness in his character that he thinks too much and this becomes the cause of his tragedy similarly if you see uh, oedipus rex uh, uh, his fate is responsible for his tragedy so when the read uh, when the audience sees uh, uh, the fall of the hero either because of some weakness in his character or because of his fate they easily understand the consequences of human action and the inevitability of suffering 
so they would understand that uh, if someone is uh, having uh, the weakness uh, like uh, the hero he would have to bear the uh, he will have to bear the consequences uh, like uh, the hero and if someone is falling the fall of the character is because of the fate then automatically the reader would realize the inevitability of suffering in human life now the epic as i told you it is considered to be the most significant one it is also called the heroic poetry and sydney calls it the belt and the most accomplished kind of poetry why he called because in which the heroic and the moral goodness is most effectively portrayed it means the function of poetry has been very well performed by this kind of poetry because it presents the picture of the heroic man and the heroic action and it through it one can also learn the moral lesson as the things have been presented in such a grand manner they definitely provide a delight so epic uh, he gives the example of epic poems like homer iliad virgil's aeneid portray the idealized action of the legendary heroes in these uh, epics uh, the idealized actions of uh, heroes have been presented uh, these idealized action may be bravery they, these characters were brave honorable they were doing everything for the justice when the reader sees these character uh, they begin to serve as the role model for the reader and they learn a lot it means the epic has the capability to uh, provide uh, some moral lesson to the reader sydney believes that epic poetry inspire both admiration and moral growth so it is performing both the function it is entertaining and it is also instructing by presenting example of virtue and encourage ethical behavior and greatness so the improvement in the behavior of the reader can be seen after learning uh, something uh, from the epic so epic is considered the most accomplished kind of poetry now the last one lyric lyric is rated high by sydney because he himself was a outstanding lyricist he wrote a number of lyrics uh, he appreciates lyric for its emotional depth because at emotionally they are quite deep and uh, the personal feelings of uh, the poet or some imaginary character have been very well expressed in the lyrics these feelings may be of love admiration or grief so uh and they have been described in a very concentrated and musical form and that is why uh, lyric always have the power of moving the soul of the reader because of the harmonious language and rhythm and simultaneously there is emotional depth also that is why it has the power to both delight and morally elevate the reader it is a versatile form it is it is universally accepted lyrics are written in each and every language and not only pleases the sense because of its musical expressions and the harmonious language it pleases the sense and because of its content they have the potential to inspire novel thoughts and virtues in the readers so these were uh, the various kind of poem poetry that has been um, defined by sydney i think you are able to understand so thanks for your patience listening